Hey Aggies, need to get to Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Metro, Austin, San Antonio, or other cities? Ditch the bus and try Hitch to book a guaranteed car ride. Hitch, comfy, safe, and affordable daily rides between Texas cities. As an official transportation provider, Hitch even has pickup locations right on campus. Download the Hitch app or visit ridehitch.com. Enter the code AGGYLAND for 30% off your first four rides. That's ridehitch.com. Welcome back to the Home Tour Podcast. It's me, Hunter Mitchell, joined here by my co-host, Kate Harris. How's it going? Uh, back for a discussion of some Aggie football. Back, Got a bye week. Back on the grind. No game to discuss. Dude, I tell you, this, last week, this Saturday, I just chilled. Didn't have a game to stress I, about. Just enjoyed college football, game. right? Yeah, exactly. Just, 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 it was immaculate no vibes. No articles to edit. Immaculate vibes. Chilled. It was awesome. <laughs> but... Peace can only prosper for so long, <laughs> and here we are. Um, a good game. Well, okay. If, if you're in the mindset of people come slow off of bye weeks, this is a good game. If you're in the mindset that you need bye weeks for longer time to prepare against an opponent, probably not the best opponent to have for a bye week. Because <laughs> uh, you're playing South Carolina, who y- is bad. Yeah, you've handled them to say the least. You're oh eight, yeah, eight and one since joining the SEC against them. The tenth installment First lost came last year. <sighs> That game was just a crap. I from immediately the start. knew after the Xavier Leggett took the opening kickoff. Yeah. I was like, "Yeah, it's over." Yeah, yeah. I mean, tenth installment of the battle for the Bonham Trophy. <sighs> Can't stand South Carolina. Oh God! Love how everyone pretends to care about the Bonham Trophy this year, buried deep in the Alamo. I love. I also love how no one knew where the trophy was until <laughs> someone said, "I actually found it. It's in the bottom of the Alamo." <laughs> oh God, man! Funny, funny. But yeah, back playing South Carolina, a two and five South Carolina team, a really underperforming South Carolina team. We had them th- three and four. You know, I did, and you did respectfully um, in the preseason, SEC preseason. But yeah, I mean, going into um, preseason, number three team in, in the East. But man, Ooh. the one issue that we highlighted. Was that offensive line and it has reared its ugly head? Atrocious, terrible, atrocious. Quite literally, one of the worst in the entire country. Yeah, I mean they are um in in passing. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. In uh like sacks allowed, you know, a category you probably want to be pretty good at if you're trying to defend your quarterback. They are really, really rough. Yeah, I had to write you know the article on. A and M's defense versus South Carolina's offense, and I definitely you know highlighted that part of it. Like 30, 31 sacks given up already this season, ranks one hundred twenty seventh in the nation. Um, it's really bad when you have to face this Aggie D line. There, a quick side note that is completely unrelated to this, like like what we we're trying to talk about here. But when I was looking at that list, Alabama, yeah, um, what. Are you on that? You're on that NCAA up, list yeah. right now. They're, they've given up 33 sacks. Their total sack. I think they've played more games in South Carolina, so the, the average is different. But their total sacks allowed ranks one of like like 131st maybe, which is one of the worst, if not the worst, in the nation. It's really Emma bad. Is 127th. They are 127th. They are right below South Carolina. Wow. Yeah. So that's. I mean that's that's a, wild that's a crazy stat. stat. Yeah. I just thought I'd point that Carolina, out. Because South Carolina is 125th in sacks, but not only just sacks, tackles for loss allowed. So they yes. are getting hit in the backfield and it, a lot. A and M leads the nation in both those categories: sacks <laughs> and tackles for loss. Not a if you are a gamecock, that's not a very good sign. No, um, that is what would sound like a recipe for disaster. Because I don't care how good your quarterback is, if he doesn't have time to throw, A and M saw it last week. It does not matter. No, it it doesn't. You have to have time to process what's going on. Uh, you have to, you know, be able to run the ball with a, uh, you know, good run blocking line. And uh, in South Carolina, seen it does not run the ball. They don't run the ball very much at all. Um, when they do, though, they they make it count. But I mean, other than that, uh, like 
it is very a pass pass reliant offense and when you have to protect your quarterback, it's not it's not the best. 121st recipe. in the nation in rushing offense. Oof. Yeah. I mean, they're very South Carolina is a very feast or famine team offensively. Yeah. Um I mean, they are 16 the Spencer Rattler is 16 in passing yards. Um and the offense as a whole is number 18 in passing offense. So, you look at that, if you looked at that stat in like a microcosm, you're like, "Wow, that's really good." But man, everything else, they and then you know even when you hop over the other side of the ball, they're 127th in passing yards allowed. They're one of the worst in the country in passing yards allowed. In the last four games, they have given up 338 and a half yards to the air. They're averaging 36 and a half points given. Man, even the run defense, they're 64th in run defense, and they're 91 team sacks. They don't get to the quarterback very much. So truthfully. This game comes down to the air. Can AM defend against the pass? If they can, South Carolina can't run the ball. It's be a good day for the defense. If they can get the ball out of Rattler's hands quick enough to where they're not getting enough pressure, to where getting the ball, you know, like Xavier Leggett, um, it could be really rough. Mm-hmm. It could be really rough. But then on the other side of the ball, AM has to be able to pass the ball efficiently. Which means that offensive line is going to have to give him Max Johnson time to throw. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, and we've mentioned before he likes to hold on to the ball a lot. So that's, I mean, in general, he needs a lot of protection. So, yeah. But yeah, spe- especially in this one where you mentioned it's going to be very patch reliant. Um, we don't know for sure yet if Xavier Leggett's playing. Mm hmm. Um, so if he's not, that's that's that's, that's really that's rough. Really Shane, bad. Shane Beamer did say that everyone was warming up in practice and that they were all kind of questionable going here and there, see how they yeah. would do in practice. Um, so you have that. Um, Juice is out for the foreseeable future for for South Carolina, which wasn't doing all that great at the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. but but it still hurts. You lose that option. Um, yeah, it 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 really. This looks like a game on paper that. You don't think A and M could lose? Yeah, uh, and you've seen them lose games like that before. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, it's it's hard to unless that locker room has just completely given up on this season. It's hard to to pick against the Aggies in this one. Yep, another eleven a.m. game. They better have breakfast tacos up in the Oh, they will. Box, oh, they're so sick. good. They're so good. I'm telling oh, yeah. you, man. I can't I will, wait. The green sauce, though, super spicy. Be careful. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll bring I'll, like, no, I'll, I'll I'll like spicy like food, but, but early in the morning, man, oh, get that heartburn going Oof. ASAP. Yeah, it was not fun. So be wary of that. Okay. Okay. Um, But, yeah, I mean, the breakfast tacos may be the most exciting thing for any South Carolina fan that, that's attending because I, I really – I think it's the most exciting thing for me, to be honest. (laughs) Like, I... (laughs) If this is close, it's a problem, I think, is what what we're looking at. Which is, is, we always talk about everyone in the SEC, you know, every game's like, every game you have to compete in. And this is true. But from a strictly statistical standpoint, because we can't can't gauge what the emotions are and what the, everything is about about the other team, A&M matches up perfectly against South Carolina. That offensive line, they should do like what they did against Arkansas and just mutilate them, just shred them to pieces. Um, And then through the air, I mean, they have the ability to really pick apart uh, South Carolina with with all those weapons on on the edges. You know, you've got Anai Smith, Evan Stewart, Noah Thomas, Jaday Walker. You've got so many, you know, Moose Muhammad. You've got so many good weapons out there on the outside that I think it would be, it would be, a complete glaring red flag, uh, shiny alarm. If you are not able to get those guys for big plays against this really bad South Carolina secondary. Mm-hmm. Yep, they're gonna have to go by that Petrino philosophy of feeding the studs. Yeah, I, I think um, feed the studs will have a big factor in this game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I, I'm hoping to see those studs kind of, you know, I I wouldn't say. No, I would say bring more life back to the fandom. Like, yeah, I'll be honest. I've, I've tuned out of Aggie football for a 
since that loss to Tennessee, I've I'm a big baseball fan, so obviously playoffs are going on. Mm-hmm. Big Rangers fan, so obviously they're doing well. And I've kind of just like Aggie football hasn't even been part of my life. Like I've done what I need to do, like for you know the battalion and everything like that. But it's just like it hasn't been the case. And so I want you know those Evan Stewart, Anaya Smith. I I want one of them or both of them just have a a crazy game and exciting game just to bring life back to the fandom and make this end of the season not as miserable as we we want it to be. <laughs> um yeah, no, I and, and I definitely foresee it happening. I think this game could be a very good springboard uh, into the rest of the season uh, definitely. Um it, it's a must win game. This and the South Carolina game. No, sorry, the South Carolina game and the Mississippi State game. Two must win games. I I I think it'll be will do a lot for you to have a really convincing win against the South Carolina team. And, and teams have been doing it. I mean, Miss Missouri did it. Um, you know, Tennessee did it. I, I, I think you can really exploit the South Carolina defense. And then if you can find, have your defense find ways to keep them off the field, I, I think you could really, think you could really coast into victory. But that being said, do you come off this bye week sluggish, slow? Um, are you not prepared to play? You know, then South Carolina could catch you by surprise. Spencer Rattler is, is a good quarterback. Um, and I think he would be excelling somewhere even more than he is now if he had a competent offensive line, uh, maybe some more weapons. But, um, you know, don't let them catch you by surprise. I think South Carolina will will come out and they'll be playing. Shane Beamer, you know, is going to have his team ready to play, whether they don't, that's the best of their abilities, how well those abilities are is to be determined. But I definitely think that – a M can't come out sluggish here because that I think they could get popped in the mouth early and it may stun them. But I think if AM comes out and does everything they need to do and keep playing to their strengths, they'll exploit South Carolina's weaknesses. Yeah. And I'm not saying it's gonna be this week, but I also think Spencer Rattler is due for like a, a breakout performance type of game. Like he had a couple of them last year against Tennessee and Clemson and he just really hasn't had one of them this season. Partly probably to do to his offensive line, but that that's another worry that you know I I, I could see A and M having to think about is just you know does that rattler that was projected to go number one overall two years ago show up again? <laughs> yeah, and then like even that I know I know we, I just emphasized the the error. Um, mm-hmm. I would like to see some good like run design and and some good runs from you know Le'Veon Moss, Samari Daniels, Rune Owens. I would like to see a balanced attack from A and M, but I think the main damage is gonna come from the era. But I would like to see Le'Veon Moss, you know, bust another big run. Um, you know, just kind of have A and M reestablish themselves on the ground. So I think they've lost that identity the past two weeks. Um but I definitely think that again the game is going to be won through the air. Yes, for sure. So that being said, score predictions. Score predictions. Everyone's favorite time. Uh, I got thirty to thirteen a And M. I think that the defense is going to dominate. Uh, this South Carolina offense. They're not going to. They're not going to let Rattler hurt them with his legs. They've proven that they can, you know, prevent that. And I think they're going to bring way too much pressure on that line. He's not going to have very much time to pass at all. Their offense doesn't move very much. I told the guy from the the editor from the Daily Gamecock, I told him thirty four seventeen South Carolina or no sorry A and M no wow. sorry yeah no. <laughs> yeah imagine why I spent this whole podcast talking about A and M to be South Carolina <laughs> then it flipped it, but the more and more I talk about it, the more and more I'm thinking forty one seventeen wow yeah okay. I think A and M. I think A and M rebounds really well. I think they come out firing. I think um, the offensive line does enough. I think South Carolina doesn't have the defensive front that A and M has been going up against the past two weeks to put up that much of a challenge. I think you know you can may I can maybe see South Carolina twenty one, you know twenty four maybe even, mm-hmm. uh, simply because A and M's past defense has been suspect. But I think that A and M has A and M's past defense looks better on paper because. They played so many games where the defensive line has not let the quarterback throw the ball. Yeah, I, I mean, I was very surprised to see that yeah. AM is ranked number twelve in yeah. total pass defense. And but that's because the defensive the line, line does right. not let them throw the ball. Right. Um so I, I think we have another one of those situations, kinda Arkansas esque. But I think that AM's defense or AM's offense will play a lot better than Ar- against 
South Carolina's defense than Arkansas's defense. Mm. South Carolina's defense looks paper thin, and I think I think Max Johnson has maybe one of his best games of his career, um, at least his maroon career, uh, against this South Carolina uh, secondary. I'm here for it. Let's see how well that ages. <laughs> Have fun in Georgia. I will. Yeah, heading to uh, heading some of the battalion editors heading to Georgia, going to catch the Georgia Tech game that night. Going to see Georgia Tech homecoming versus UNC. I'm super King excited. King. Return of the King. Get to watch Haynes King again. Never thought I'd ever be doing that again. <laughs> uh, but here we are. I'm sure he misses me. Um, <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but going to Atlanta. Super excited for that. Um, that being said. Um, our next football and uh, uh, missing volleyball and soccer again this week. Um, missing our next f- two football ones as well. Probably mm-hmm. push back later that week. Got to work out scheduling there. Um, mm-hmm. But for this week, that is all we have for you. I'm Hunter Mitchell. I'm Kate Harris. And we'll catch you all next time.